Hey everyone, welcome back to Tough Live Podcast. Today we're doing episode 13. My name is Matt Adamchak, the host and owner and head coach of Four Star Strength in Livonia, Michigan. Uh, this is the Tough Live Podcast. If it's your first time tuning in, basically just a quick 15, 30 minute jot average uh, talking about weightlifting and or sport and basically just talking about topics that need to get talked on. Sometimes these topics get hammered out over and over again, just the same dull material. So just trying to spice it up, talk about different things. Uh, today with me today is Dr. Jason Ovetsky. He is the owner of Champion Mindset Group based out of Michigan here. And uh, I'm going to let him go ahead and talk about himself. I've known him for a few years now, had a couple of my athletes work with him. I love the work he does. He's come in, done seminars, clinics for us as well. Uh, and Jason, let's go ahead and talk about you, sir. Yeah, well, thanks first of all, Matt. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, good to catch up with you as well. Uh, yeah, so I am a sport and performance psychology coach. Uh, I have an office in Birmingham, Michigan, uh, just in the metro Detroit area. Um, and I work with athletes. Um, I don't do necessarily do therapy. I consider my work coaching. And I work with athletes as young as 10 years old, if they're ready, uh, all the way up to professional athletes, all different sports, boys and girls, men and women. And we work on a number of things. Uh, we work on things like mental prep, focus, dealing with adversity, understanding the differences of stress, pressure, nerves, and anxiety, and how to manage all those things. Uh, clearly, we work on confidence and strategies to manage that. Uh, we work on setting proper process-focused goals, uh, mental training tactics like uh, your inner voice, visualization, how to focus and concentrate better. Uh, another topic that I know we were going to want to discuss today is self-image and identity. Um, and it could be a number of things. Some of my professional athletes are dealing with all kinds of crap, uh, contracts, families, coaches, travel. And then some of my younger athletes are dealing with their coaches and where they're going to go to college and things of that nature. So I'm very honored and blessed to be able to work with the people I work with. It's been a, it's been a great, great ride so far. Awesome. Um, so you said the youngest you work with. I'm very <clears throat> curious. What's the oldest you've worked with? Ooh. Um, Probably late 60s, early 70s. That's awesome. Um, people that are uh, very much in shape. One actually was a, I don't know if you know what the, how you call the sport, dog obstacle course, dog agility. Oh, really? Have you ever seen it on TV? Yeah, yeah, where they the dogs run through the tunnels and the ramps and all that. You got to be in good shape to do that. Well, yeah, they have to run around. Um, the issue was, this was a very kind lady, a uh, very accomplished professional, and she did this as her sport or hobby, and her nerves and a little bit of anxiety were kind of translating to the dog. And yeah. if you false start twice in that sport, you're done. Yeah, So yeah. we had to keep the dog calm, and from the beginning, from getting out of the car all the way to the facility, so we worked on her to help her help the dog so yeah that's oh kind God, of a, that's so cool man I, yeah. I tell beginner coaches all the time like <clears throat> I literally just had a uh a young athlete named miranda run me um that's like a friend in the sport she's a, a she was a youth athlete now she's a junior but we joked about like okay i'm gonna do a meet and i'm gonna have you run me she's like i don't, I don't know what i'm doing like i'm an athlete I, I don't run people i was like no you can run me i don't care like i don't really care how i do at a meet i'm just goofing around and after the meet, she did really well. And one of the things I told her, I was like, you set the tone for your athletes. So like, if you seem nervous and anxious and like, you're worried you're going to make mistakes, like they're going to read that. Sure. And it's funny how that, that same thing that we tell athletes like that as coaches to athletes, like you're now, you're setting the precedent for like lead to dog. <laughs> and that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, hearing that. Uh, that's cool. I would have never guessed that that was the, um, the conversation to have and the, yeah. the sport that you'd be working with. But that's really cool. Um, yeah, all different sports. It's amazing what, what comes in the door. Yeah. Um, how long have you been uh, doing it just for the uh, listeners? Yeah. Please. So officially champion mindset group has been around for about 15 years. Um, I was a division one baseball player in college and learned the importance of the mental game through my own struggles. Um, and when I was done playing, knew I wanted to stay in it somehow. So I went back to grad school, got my advanced degrees, um, worked as a school psychologist in education also for 25 years, working with kids with special needs and challenging behaviors and consulting with teachers and school districts. 
Uh, but all along I was coaching and working with athletes and then officially started Champion Mindset Group about 15 years ago. So I did two jobs for a long time and then retired from the schools a couple of years ago. And I see about 20 to 25 athletes one-on-one -on -one every week, not always the same athletes, uh, just, you know, depending on what their schedules are. Uh, and then when I'm not here doing individual consultations and coaching, I'm not maybe speaking like I did at your gym or, you know, working with a set of coaches, meeting in the offices, things like that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I, uh, I actually have one of our athletes um, reach out because I asked like, who do you guys want me to have and who you want me to interview? And uh, he had reached out and said your name particularly. He's like, I would like <laughs> to hear, you know, some things that he says. Cause I actually listened to your previous one and I liked what he was saying. So mm. he was the one that put the request that I won't like call him out on here. Not that yeah. I need to, but he knows who he was. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one of the topics that I wanted to talk to you about today was one that I see a lot as a weightlifting coach, because I definitely get a lot of athletes that come from previous sporting backgrounds. Like they may come from gymnastics, they may come from football or college baseball, and then they transition to the weightlifting world because they want to stay in shape. There's also mm -hmm. a, what we can call is maybe like a post-collegiate competitive environment, right? Like most sports, once you're, once you're done with college, they die. There's nothing mm -hmm. left uh, unless you want to call it like beer league. Right. Um, so we get a lot of transition and there's a lot of what I guess I'll dub is like unhealthy uh, identity crises with like, if like a soccer player, for example, like they have this ground into them that if they like played poorly or had a bad game, like their whole identity as a soccer player is their identity. And like when you're a weightlifter or when you're an, an athlete, like there's a whole nother fraction to you and a whole nother piece of the pie that you need to respect and understand. Like, you're not defined by your athletic performance all the time. Like, and mm -hmm. I guess when you're an elite level athlete, like, and you're getting paid for that, maybe there's some room for discussion of like, yeah, a little bit of you is defined by that. But how do you help athletes work through that? Like, Hey, yeah, you had a bad training day, but like, that doesn't mean you're a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, explanation. there's a lot to unpack there. So this is a near and dear topic for me. Uh, I blew up my elbow my senior year in college. So I was on track to potentially sign a professional contract, nothing crazy or first round or anything like that, but maybe have a cup of coffee in the minor leagues, see what happens. But <clears throat> my whole identity was, I'm a baseball player. This is who I am. This is what I do. And that was unhealthy because when I got hurt and realized my career was pretty much over, I went through a dark period of not quite knowing who I was. Like I remember dark days, like not wanting to eat, didn't want to get out of bed, didn't want to talk to anybody about it. Um, it took a while for me to understand that, hey, um, the person is way more important than the player. And I kind of stole that tagline from another coach uh, named Brett Ledbetter down in Florida. He did a video about that. Person is greater than the player. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that back then, but I know it now, and it's a great way to talk about it. But, yeah, so it's really important for us to – create an understanding that we are way more than our performance. And the problem, Matt, is we are socialized a lot to believe that we are our performance. Yeah. Because when you think about it, uh, let's say you perform in a, in, a, in a weightlifting tournament match, and as soon as you're done, what are the questions that you get? Yeah, it's all praise. It's how, how did you do? How did you do? How do you think you did? Did it go well? Right, right. So the same for young athletes. They come off the field or the court or the whatever, the rink. Hey, did you win? How many goals did you score? How many strikeouts did you have? How many yeah. hits did you get? Uh, what was your score in golf? Not, hey, good to see you. How are you? How do you feel? Do you feel good about your performance? But it's yeah. always about the outcomes and the stats and the numbers of the times. It's funny you say and, that because, like, at meets, I actually make it a point when I see younger athletes – that like I've traveled with at like youth and junior meets or just senior athletes. I actually say, Hey, how are you? How life been? Like before I start asking, like, how do they do? Yeah, it's good. Versus like, I've always seen that transaction. Like you see somebody you haven't seen since the last meet four months ago. It's just like, how'd you do? It's like, there's like more to a person there. Like maybe they got engaged between then and there or had yeah. a kid. 
Sure. There's so much more than human, but continue on. I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. So, I mean, we just want as coaches or as um, teammates and parents in particular to, you know, be aware of the kind of questions that we ask our young athletes, because if they start hearing the same questions about their outcomes, which they can't control most of the time, then they feel like that's how people define and see them. And that starts turning inward. And that's all we see ourselves as. So then when we do have a bad performance, we feel like we're terrible too as a person. Yeah. So we're unpacking that a lot with young athletes these days. And what I try to do is help athletes develop a healthier sense of identity. So I let them know that, look, hey, when you were born, you didn't know who you were and you started to develop and experience the world. And then you started to get feedback. And some of that feedback was positive or negative or just feedback. And we start incorporating and assimilating that information inside. And we start making definitions about who we are or what we like and what we don't like and what we're good at, what we're not good at. Some of the information and feedback we get is really good and positive and supportive, but some of it's not true. Or we overhear somebody say something about us. Oh, he's not a good singer. He's never going to be a musician. You could crush somebody's talent and ambition with a simple word yep. without even realizing it. And so these identities then are formed. And then we start repeating them to ourselves. Oh, I'm not very good at math. Never been good at numbers. And you hear kids in school talk about that all the time. And the more you repeat it, hey, you're listening. And we know that in, like in sports, repetition is how you build something. Yeah. Well, the more you repeat ineffective thought patterns, the more likely you are to believe them. And then your behavior will likely back them up because we want to be right. We want yeah. our behavior to be in, in alignment with what we believe, even if it's wrong. So you can say, see, I told you, I'm not good at that or whatever. Yeah. And then we start to live out that particular identity. So what we try to do is unpack that and then help an athlete redefine who do you really want to be and what are some of the barriers to that success so let's yeah. understand some of the barriers and let's work on some of our character skills to help us overcome some of those barriers and be very mindful and intentional each day about what we're trying to do and be very mindful about what we say about ourselves whether it's inside or to others gotcha yeah one of the one of the things that I've um, I learned this one in the army is like uh, the pie chart, like especially in the army where like you are as a private, like you're just you are a cog in the machine. You have no identity whatsoever. Um, and like I was described it as as a pie chart, and like you can't as like so I'll sit there and talk to an athlete. Okay, so you you come to the gym, you go to school, and you go home. It's like, okay, so those are the three things you do in life. So like, okay, so if you have a bad training day and you think you're trash in training and then you got like a C on a test, you now think you're trash. So two thirds of your pie chart is just, you're a piece of trash. Like there's more to life than that. You need to get, I tell my athletes all the time. I was like, I don't want you just lifting. I want you to have other hobbies. My athletes that sit there and like obsess and are just like, all I do is I go to school and I weight lift. I'm like, that's probably the worst thing you could actually do. I would like you, I'd like you to have a social life. I would like you to get a girlfriend or boyfriend or significant other. I'd like you to play video games, start making miniature boats inside of bottles. I don't give a shit what the <laughs> fuck you do, but like you need to have like a, a good sized pie chart. So that way when things don't go well, your whole identity doesn't just collapse under itself. Cause like, again, you, know, you go home, you have a relationship, you go to school, you're a weightlifter. Okay. Your girlfriend breaks up with you and you have a bad training day. 50% of your life is now trash. And it's very easy to fall into a gigantic slump. <clears throat> then because yeah. And of it, those two things. And like, you start to think you're a, a, t a bad person or you're never going to succeed. And that's like, yeah, I mean, we talk about, it depends on how adept a person is at, keeping those things in perspective. Like what lens are you gonna look at that through? Um, if you only see yourself as one thing or just a couple of things, that could be a potential problem. Um, this is kind of where the stoicism thing comes in that we talked about before we began. It's like, 
looking at events as just events without judgment, right? The Stoics were really good at saying, all right, that's a thought that I just have, but is it real? Yeah. Or I'm feeling some pain. Does it necessarily mean it's bad or it's terrible or is it just pain? Like, yeah. We try to be more objective about these things. And, and one of the tools that we use to help athletes do this is we keep a simple, it's not long, a performance journal. And I know uh, a lot of the weightlifters keep journals about their weights and yep. the weights and what they're doing. We actually, the uh, new software we use um, that we've been writing the members to appropriately use, they know who I'm talking to right now, mm -hmm. but it actually, it actually checks a bunch of performance questions and asks how you sleep, what's your mood, um, how you ate, uh, general, like how you feel, all those types of questions. And some of them like skim over them and like not <clears> thinking they're important to log, but on the back end, coach Tracy and myself, like we can sit there and see and log and see like how they're feeling and then see a correlation to like their performance directly. Yeah. And, and the ones that do log it, we can sit there and be like, Hey, I see you're not sleeping enough. Or I see, you know, you, you say you're frustrated or you're stressed all the time and like you're training here. And it's very easy to see those types of things when you actually log it. Yeah. Ours is, you know, it could be added onto that where we just ask two, two part questions. Hey, what was successful today and why? Like, what did you do well today and why? Because if you know why, you can do it again and you stack up those days. That's going to help you build confidence. And then simply, what could have been better? And what's your plan to work on it? Yeah, more importantly. It. And just be very objective. Not what did you screw up? What did you mess up? Just, so hey, what handle, could have been better? How do you handle when your athletes hate answering that question? Well, so when you're working with I, someone, because I know you deal with it, because I deal with it too, is you sit there and you're like, all right, so what do we do great today? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll probably ask more direct questions like, all right, well, how many lifts did you get up today versus how many you didn't? Okay, so there's probably more you got up than you didn't. All right, so that went well. You had a mm -hmm. higher percentage of makes and misses. Um, why do you think that happened? Why do you think you made more than you missed? They got to answer that. And then yeah. what could you have done better? It's hard like, for them. A lot of them have trouble with yeah. that. Like that. Yeah. That critical thought process. I was talking to one of our uh, female athletes the other day. I was like, <laughs> Cause her jerks have been giving her issues. I'm like, then it started clicking. We had some conversation about the mechanics and stuff. And then it started clicking. I'm like, okay, what did you just think about to change that? She's like, I don't know. And I was like, no, no, no. something flipped. Like you've got to memorize and, and dig into whatever you just switched because that's what you have to chase now. Cause that's the big component you just made. So like, keep doing it, keep figuring out what you just made the adjustment on. So that way you can consistently keep making that adjustment. And I think by after every training session, sitting down for five minutes and writing that out and thinking about it, helping yourself process it will make you more mindful and aware consistently throughout your training times. So you can make those little adjustments and things like that as well. Yeah. It's, which, which, it's, no, go ahead. I was going to say, which leads me kind of another similar topic, you know, in terms of preparation and, and being aware and acceptance is, I like my athletes, we talk about like um, pre-event or pre-game routines. And a big one I've come up with is what I call AAA. Every day, as you're warming up or getting loose or you arrive, make an assessment. How do I feel today? What do I have in the tank? What, how my, how's my mental state? How's my physical body? Then you have to accept it. Hey, this is what I'm bringing to the dance today. I got to dance with the person I'm bringing to the dance. Yep. Love it. Love Instead it. of chasing something that you don't have, like, oh, I, I felt it. so good the other day. I have that conversation day. so often. Yeah. So you have to accept it, though. So you assess it, then you have to commit and accept it. And then you make adjustments for today based off what you accepted and ride that out. Yeah. Solid. I really like that. And, and I think if you do that more often, you will actually perform more consistently in the upper third of your potential than chasing something you don't have that day. Yeah, you get higher quality training. That's right, because you're focused on what you do. Have You become the best version of yourself for that day. And kind of piggybacking on identity, like if I go out there every day, assess, accept, and make adjustments, and then with intention go do that, I'm more likely to have a good day and my identity builds off of yeah. that. Not just because of what I lifted, but how I did it. 
the quality more than the quantity. I think you also start to read yourself better. Mm. And I think that's especially in weightlifting. And like, I didn't play many sports growing up, so I won't even like speak on other things, but like you start, you start to learn what you can do, what you're capable of doing. And then you have to like know how far you can push the threshold. And I think one of the things is you see beginners just like push the threshold wildly far and then get frustrated because they, they have, they're not making these big gigantic pushes Mm. because they're in realistically, they're pushing the threshold way too far. But then they also like don't need to stay in this ultra safe zone. So it's like they're they're doing one thing that's the extreme or the, not the extreme and they're not trying hard enough. And like by coming in and just going hard all the time, it's like not getting them where they need to go. So maybe by that approach, like you were just saying of like, OK, today I you know, I've already worked 12 hours today at the plant. I need to come in. I need to not make misses. So maybe like be a little conservative on my lifts, maybe not make gigantic jumps like I did earlier this week and just make more lifts than miss more lifts. And that's like progress. And then build off that. Like stuff like that, I think is super important. Yeah. I think if you do that approach of assessment and acceptance, you then ask yourself, okay, based on what I have today, what is a good day? Yeah. What does a good day look like for me today? And then you go after that with what you do have. I definitely, definitely like that. Cause I like, I don't know, man, in this sport, people like people have a hard time accepting like that they didn't get sleep and they didn't eat well. And then their performance is bad and they get angry at themselves. It's like, why, why are you mad at yourself? Like, yeah. People have a weird way of thinking they're robots and everything should just be the same no matter what. It's, just... it's, it's hard for me. Cause I was in the army, man. And I was like, I was an infantry grunt. I went through some of the SF schools. Like, it's hard for me to accept that shit. It's like, I've seen people run down to zero that literally are psychotic robots. Like you're not, (laughs) it's such a different level. And like, also it's not healthy. What they did in the army and what they do in the army is not healthy to do every day. So like, even on the, on the realm of like trying to do that to yourself over and over and over again, you're just depleting yourself and causing more damage down the line And, and getting people to understand that is so hard. Mm hmm. And that's, that's where like, you know, the, the identity thing is like, okay, you are, you, you need to set the balance of like, just because you had a bad week doesn't mean you're turning into a worse weightlifter. Yeah. Like you have to have, you're not making nationals this year after your first year of lifting doesn't mean you haven't (laughs) made progress, like stuff like that. Yeah. We have to make sure that our athletes have clarity, clarity of purpose. Why are they doing this? What's the goal? Um, being realistic, but, you know, optimistic about it as well. So kind of putting a bow on the identity thing. Once we, we understand this a lot better, then we create something. We actually create a product called an identity statement where we'll brainstorm together some character skills, some goals, some values of who do I really want to be? Like, how do I want to be remembered as an athlete, as a person, as a father, as a husband, whatever you are. And then, write a statement and give it some context. Like, this is who I am. This is who I'm always striving to be. You know, be honest and realistic, but you're striving to be this every day. I'm trying to achieve this every day. I'm doing the best I can with what I have every day to get here. And then once you have this statement, it becomes this filter for every decision you make. Meaning, okay, if I'm trying to become this guy, if I'm striving towards this, what would that person do in this situation? How would they respond? What would they say? And if I'm inconsistent, if I'm not in alignment with who I'm trying to become, then we have problems. That's when yeah. mental health issues start to really crop up. But if you are behaving in alignment, even if you weren't 100% successful every day, but you went in the right direction, you did something, that's a good day. Yeah, no, I like that. It, it's almost like a, uh, a contract you signed with yourself too. Yeah. Um, which, which I think more athletes should probably do um or even even the even the thought of like uh coach athlete contracts i think sometimes accountability yeah accountability contracts basically so um so generally during these i like to as i told you like to do a uh a like just a fun little uh scenario hypothetical 
we did like 20 questions in the back. So we're going to kind of run through some situations. Um, okay. With your, uh, your professional background of working with athletes in difficult scenarios and or, you know, getting them out of the mud or <laughs> poor scenarios, I wanted to run you through a couple photos here. So our podcast folks that listen will need to hop on YouTube to see it. But, um, you know, I kind of want your, your ideas of, uh, you know, your athlete that you're working with is sitting there and in the scenario, what you're going to tell them and how you're going to work them through the scenario that we have here. I'm afraid already. <laughs> so uh, our, our first one, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. First one here. All right. So okay. this is your athlete on the ground. Clearly uh, not having a great day. Um, you know, I don't think he's doing well. He has a very large, angry man. We all know as Muhammad Ali, yeah. ready to knock him out. What are you telling him? How are you keeping him Oof. motivated? Well, <laughs> his identity honest. might be risky right now. <laughs> his identity is uh, in trouble at the moment. You know, uh, boy, what do you tell him? Well, first, get up. <laughs> yes, I think that's good. And take stock of <laughs> where you are in this situation right now um like we said assess how you feel and I, is there I'm any possible he probably feels like shit okay or is um, about to right is there any possible way to get through this round um to sustain life in this yes, situation that, yeah that might be the, that might be the cap right there <laughs> yeah and Sustaining then get back life. to the corner and ask yourself if this the life i want to uh keep leading uh, <laughs> right, or right. Or objectively, you know, here's a great question. What happened? Asking yourself, what happened? I believe he got knocked the fuck out. Well, right. But I mean, <laughs> if we're being realistic about it, like, <laughs> what happened there? Like, all right, did I make a wrong move and got clipped? Or is this guy just way better than me and I need to just survive this? Like, or did I just make a stupid mistake? It might be both. <laughs> it might be both. It might be both. Yeah, I don't know if there's a good answer in this, but. <laughs> okay, our uh, our next athlete, um, we're going to say is probably a beginner, uh, mountain biker. Or gonna very go cocky. I'm going to go with beginner <laughs> due to the uniform he has. We have mismatching shoes. Oh, yeah. Good, good uh, and it looks like he did not assemble his bike correctly. So, mm. He's in his first race and this has occurred. And then he comes back to you and tells you what happened. What are we talking about? Hmm. He's in his first race. His, how can we get him back on his bike? Well, again, I think the best question is what happened in your perspective? You know, what, it, what happened there? Because we don't know what happened. We, did he hit a bump? Did he not tighten the screws right on his bike? Or is he not suited for what he is attempting to do? So, <laughs> and well, first of all, you know, are you okay? Because that looks very painful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a safe call. Yeah, um, I think all these questions are going to be very similar when it comes to you know assessment and being objective and figuring things out. These are Fair. tough. Fair. These are great pictures. I like, you, I like that you did not ask, did they win? That was good. Right, right, oh, right. This okay, is a uh, an unfortunate photo. The athlete here. Uh, has kicked the other athlete and his leg is now bent the other way. Oh, wait, I can't see that. Uh, so down here, this is one of those amazing. Oh, MMA the bone fights. is broken. Yeah. yeah. This is one of those amazing MMA fights where he kicked and bone broke and is bending and he has to continue the fight. Ooh. Um, you know, what are you, what are you telling the, uh, the athlete with the, with the Gumby leg now? Well, how's he staying in? Man. You're in his corner, Jason. I'm, I'm, uh, and he has a noodle for a leg. Yeah, I'm probably throwing in the white towel. I mean, <laughs> that can't be good. That bone could start popping through the skin there any second if he puts any pressure on it. I'm just being realistic. I mean, this always makes me uncomfortable, these broken bones. Yeah. Man, we got to live right. to fight another day, so let's go. Well, speaking of lift to fight another. Oh, day, I was at this game. I did, oh, were you? <laughs> I had to throw some homage to the uh, some homage to the Lions in here. Uh, I was there. Stomped. God, I'm going to say this, and people are going to hate on me, but <laughs> getting literally stomped by one of the historically worst teams in the NFL. Uh, what are you? What are you know? Actually, I'm going to counter you. I'm going. What are you going to okay. tell number ninety when oh. he comes in? 
after you saw him do this? What were you thinking? Right? What was going through your mind mm. at that moment? Like, were your emotions that high? I mean, that this you man felt said like to stop. he told him to stop. What's that? He, this man's clearly telling him to stop, and he did not listen. The man on the ground? No, this man over here. Oh, oh, he's holding him back. I see what you're saying. Oh, the other guy. Yeah, yeah, 63. Yeah. Well, I have a little bit more intimate knowledge of this than you believe, but yeah, oh. I mean, uh, well, do indulge, do indulge. No, we can't divulge things, but um, clearly there was some anger issues there and some disassociation from what was going on in reality. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't mean for the photo to be so interpersonal. This is no, no. I don't honestly don't know him personally, but I kind of know gotcha. what was going on around there. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's ironic. Yep, um, I was there. I was at that game actually. That's funny. Oh, you found a picture of me. No, I'm just Yeah, kidding. I was going to say, um, <laughs> this may cover a lot of people. Um, the age old, I am the world's worst golfer in the world, even though I've been doing it for only like two years and I play only nine times during the summer, but I bought <laughs> $900 clubs and spent thousands all summer to do it with my friends for six hours a day. Yep. But I expect myself to be better. Yeah. So this goes to your I managing it? expectations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the classic not managing your expectations, not being true to yourself. So, yeah, um, I always tell, especially with golfers, uh, we talk a lot about this when it comes to, hey, every day you show up at the course, you know, are you there to compete at the tournament level? Are you there to develop and get better? Dude, I'm just or are you there? The ball. The ball are you there? Me. Yeah. Or yeah. It or just there to have some fun and throw a few back with your buddies, right? So you gotta understand what your expectation, whatever sport you're in, what are the expectations for today? Why are you here today? And if you are there to compete at a high level and you've prepared well and you should be playing that well, then yeah, it's okay to get angry. I'm not ever, never a fan of breaking equipment, but I have no problem with athletes getting upset and even saying something, as long as it, once they say it or do it, it's over. And then we need to regroup and, and refocus and get back into the next shot or the next play. So a lot of people that work with me um, always say, well, you probably don't want me to do any of that. You don't want me to say anything. You don't want me to get mad or, you know, I it's like, no, you can. I, and I don't even want you to be it's positive. Okay to be emotional. Yeah. It's okay to have some emotion, just not for very long, because yeah. I feel like it's my opinion over time, emotions make you weak when you perform. I think you have to think tactically, effectively, productively. So have your emotional outburst, be done with it, and then let's regroup and let's get ready for the next situation. But I, like I don't it. expect you to be happy if you make a mistake. Be pissed, but yeah. get it out of your system and move on. Oof. <laughs> um, so, so our next one, uh, athlete comes uh, to you and uh, says, you know, just mm. um, it was a bad game jason <laughs> how do i uh move forward from this one yeah what are you telling them you'd be surprised this comes up more than you think um especially with young kids you know being afraid by the ball hit by the yeah. ball or some kind of pain in their sport so first and foremost we we process it uh th sometimes the best approach to this mad is logic um hey it's unfortunate you've been hit hit pretty poorly in this one but the chances are you've been at bat a zillion times. You've seen a million pitches. How many times have you been hit like that? So the odds are this probably will not happen again. I hope at no least one gets not, hit like this. It's right. Terrible. It's terrible, but it happens. Um, or just get hit in the back. It doesn't feel good either. Yeah. But odds are it won't happen as much. And that's the logic part of it. Then we have to help them regain some confidence and stability in what they do. And this is where a great visualization comes in. Uh, watching video of themselves perform well in those situations, just being able to see it in their mind, see it on a screen to slowly build back up the confidence so they can go back out there and put themselves in a potentially dangerous or traumatic situation. Yeah. Systematic desensitization. We deal with a lot of this when like people drop bars on them. We gotta, yeah. I, yeah. I go with that same one. It's like, dude, you've taken 137 lifts this week and have not dropped a single one. So like, shake it off let's try to right. rebuild um this is a team one when uh you <laughs> you're just having a shit day man 
what is what is what is the hey guys shake it off from uh dr jason novetsky here there is no shake it off there it's uh, (laughs) let's be honest either we're in the wrong league or we didn't show up or what is happening there yeah that's not pretty yeah uh and uh impending doom (laughs) (laughs) close your eyes help (laughs) <laughs> the, uh, the scenario, the scenario where you're about to get really messed up, you know, mm. you know, you know, you've, you know, you're going up a bad team or, you know, you're, uh, you took too heavy of a weight. What are, uh, what are you telling your athletes? How are you getting their mentality? Make better decisions. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. I appreciate having you. Uh, thank you as always. Um, of course. With our athletes whenever I've called. Yeah. Uh, website is champmindset.com champion mindset group in google um you can search us on social media champion mindset group uh, twitter instagram facebook stuff like that website's probably the easiest way to get in touch yeah on his website guys there's also a reading list i highly Hmm. recommend you pop over there um I myself find it very hard with a toddler and my own business to now find time to read, but I have been hitting up these books personally. I haven't told you, but I've been chipping away at them uh, through mm. just audiobooks on my yeah. drives around. Um, and they're all really good reads. So I highly suggest those. And uh, if you yourself are looking from around the country or uh, here in Michigan, I would reach out to Jason. He's got a lot of good stuff, a lot of good content to help athletes. Um, thank you, Jason, for your time. My pleasure. And as always, I appreciate it. You bet. Happy holidays, everybody. Yep. Thanks, man.